Now this is part three of lecture on chapter six. Let us now here discuss the trade-off between current and future consumption. See, uh, the decision between save or to consume is actually the uh, a trade-off between current and future consu consumption. If you consume today, then uh, that is current consumption. You don't save. But if you do not consume today, uh, they, and you save, uh, save, then, then uh, in the in the future you you get back your principal and your interest, and then you can consume. So so the decision to invest or to or, the, or to or, or to not to invest is actually what a, a decision a trade off between current consumption you consume today or you postpone you sacrifice consumption today you save it and then when future comes your investment mature then you uh, then you consume so that becomes future consumption right so the next thing we want to discuss is investment this happens when resources are devoted to increasing future output that is investment so when when we do not consume when we when so uh, when resources are devoted to increasing future output right so in a state of uh, producing pizza if we produce more industrial robots remember that example from chapter one if we produce more goods for the future which is machine tools equipments then what research and development then uh, real estate those are all what those are all goods for the future when the future comes you can use those tools machine tools, equipments, research and development to what? To produce more. On the other hand, goods for the present, like goods, like this present consumption, if you consume today, it will give you benefit, utility today, but then it's gone. But if, when the future comes, goods for the future, goods like pizza will not help you produce more. So, so investment is like goods for the future. By building a, a new research facility, in uh, which scientists invest in the next generation of fuel efficient automobiles. This is one example of investment, right? Instead of consuming, we can divert, the country can divert fund to build a new generation research facility. And that will yield result in the future. And those results will pave the way for higher growth in the future. Or by constructing super efficient factory. When the factory is constructed, right then that will help produce more in the future in the state of consuming today we can go for investment so this again is a clear example of this trade-off between consume more today or consume more in the future now we want to define financial investment and economic investment right financial investment uh, financial investment include what uh, financial investment include uh, financial investment happens when there is one when there is um, uh, there is a uh, purchase or purchase when the business is purchasing new machine tools equipments and also investing in stocks and bonds, right? Uh, so it is the broad definition of investment. But economic investment is different. Economic investment is only will only happen when there is production of new machine tools equipment, new factory space, new warehouse, right? New research and development. Uh, whenever, so yeah, there is a, so economic investment is the narrow definition of investment. So remember, we said if you buy that in financial investment, if you buy stocks and bonds, those are just paper certificates. As such, they do not represent production of machine tools equipments. So those are included as investment only in financial investment, but not in economic investment. Economic investment will only include production of machine tools equipments. So suppose you are buying, you are an investor, you are buying second-hand machine tools equipments from your friend that will not show up as economic investment that will however show up as what as financial investment right so 
So, so households are principal source of savings, but businesses are main economic investors. In an economy, we will show you that households, government, and businesses. See, government, they don't spend much, they borrow. Businesses, they don't save much, they borrow. But households, small, millions of small households have small amounts of savings. They are the, excuse me, they are the big savers in the economy, right? But uh, and as a result, they they will uh, they will small uh, save a little bit of money and take it to the bank or other financial in, uh, in institutions and save it over there in as in the form of deposits, right? And then banks and financial institutions they collect of collect a small deposit from thousands or millions of small investors, right? Households, small households. And, and then they will pull that amount and then and that and then spend that money uh, save uh, uh, spend and then the banks will then loan loan this money to the big investors most big investors in the us today like nokia motorola and other big businesses right uh, um, they borrow money they don't run their business based on their own money they will either sell share and raise investment fund to finance their projects or they will go to bank and borrow money businesses in japan are and businesses in europe are more dependent on loans given from the banks right these loans banks get this fund from thousands of small investors as we small savers as we have already said to you right so so this is how what happened and uh, that uh, that is how banks banks pool to, to banks this is how banks and financial institutions transfer pool of savings of a small investor to businesses to big businesses right like nokia motorola ibm big businesses so that they can create the capital goods which help their country grow this is how this is how the uh, often we call we call banks and these financial institutions like insurance companies investment uh, company investment companies and commercial banks financial institution like what like mutual funds uh, uh, mutual funds and then uh, savings and loan associations those are other type of financial institutions they collect money from the depositors they collect a pool of money and then take it to the bank then the banks the banks will then find borrowers corporate big corporations right and then lend the money and then this is how oh, uh, this is how the banking banking system and the financial institution institutions challenge channel money from the from the savers to the investors in the economy now macroeconomy is devote considerable attention to money banking and financial institution why because these is they uh, they uh, these uh, these financial institutions they uh, they serve a very important link between the savings and side of the economy and the investment side of the economy right if this is not functioning for some reason then uh, then businesses will not get enough fund there will be a shortage of fund and then profitable investment projects will not be funded and then that will create what unemployment that will uh, loss of output loss of income in the economy as, as a result uh, the government plays a special uh, attention to the well-functioning financial system any any time there is a problem the government will step in to solve the problem and keep the system running right and this is vital for economic growth now um, now we discuss this role of uncertainty expectations and shocks the importance of expectations and shocks play a key role in investment, right? Expectations affect investment. No one wants to invest in a, in a, in a situation where they, they are not sure if they will be able to recover their money. You see, investors, they are businesses. They want to maximize profit. Unless they, are, they have some understanding that, that the business environment is good, the time is right to invest, they will not spend their money to invest they will look for assurance of being able to recover their investment with a healthy profit. 
see and and expectations about the future whether the expectations of investors about the future is optimistic or whether the expectations of, of the investors about the future is pessimistic depend uh, plays a critical role here in investment what happen happens when expectations are unmet so you see expo some uh, many times we, uh, businesses will make an expectation make a may invest in a project but that expectation may be unmet right so uh, so a farm um, decides to build a high speed railroad will, uh, that will shuttle passengers between los angeles and las vegas so the farm they hire consultant they uh, they study demand for this uh, shuttle service and they see that everything is okay numbers are right so they borrow money from the bank and they invest but unfortunately demand is low why because maybe the plane fare between los angeles and las vegas is not so high so people try to uh, pre people prefer to take the plane or maybe the road system between los angeles and las vegas is good people prefer to drive right rather than take the shuttle shuttle high speed rail and in that case the business will be what bankrupt right they do so when the farms when the farms invest when the farms uh, invest they will do so with the hope of what uh, with the hope of the expectations that oh. here we were in this slide right uh, talking about this high speed railroad between los angeles and las vegas when the businesses invest they expect to earn a profit but they don't all but sometimes there is unexpected change uh, unexpected result and businesses then take a loss and right now this we call shocks what is a shock what happens what happens is not what you expected whenever the actual outcome is different from expected outcome we call that a shock right and there can be demand shock positive demand shock or negative demand shock there can be supply shock positive supply shock or negative supply shock so demand shock positive demand shock looks like positive demand shock refers to a situation in which demand turns out to be higher than expected while a negative demand shock refers to a situation in which demand turns out to be lower than expected in the case of that lower demand for the shuttle service between los in california los angeles in las vegas that was unexpected negative demand shock right on the other hand some countries sometimes they will have positive demand shock also so positive demand shock one example will be like Uh, development of new technology like what computers right so you see i uh, positive for computer and information technology this will reduce cost of doing business and this will uh, allow in a uh, allow employees workers to produce more with less resources it will increase productivity this productivity output worker and as a result as a result this increases profit of businesses and this creates a big demand the millions of dollars a big amount of money invested whenever we have such positive demand shocks right so like one example of this will be uh, railway you see in the old days railway was a major innovation then even before that there was steam engine right before the steam engine people used to have what stage coaches uh um, animal power cars right but then steam engine the james watt invented the steam engine and this is one of the major innovations in 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 england in in industrial revolution right uh, and then they they learned how to use steam engine in different cases uh, uh, to power factories 
then they learn to put a steam engine on a on a car and then rail line railway become available and then they learn to put the steam engine in in a ship